at least one good thing about all this is that Jack and I um, have been having the chance to go out a lot more and just enjoy nature and sunshine, um, get some vitamin D. Um, we've always, you know, really liked nature. Obviously, we love hiking. We love going different places and just seeing different sites um, and just immersing ourselves uh, and all the amazing things that this, this, this planet has to offer. But um, it's definitely harder to do during the school year uh, when you're just busy all the time and kind of like doesn't become a priority. But um, having all this extra time <laughs> definitely made it um, a lot a lot nicer, and it was more of like a daily ritual for us, and just a way to get out of the house and see some other things that weren't each other. Um, but yeah, so it was it was really great, and we got to explore some places around Bowling Green and on campus that we'd never been before, even though we've. Um, you know, whenever right, whenever we first uh, came here, neither of us had a car for the first couple of years. Um, he's a year above me, but so he got a car before me. But um, so we had to walk pretty much everywhere we ever wanted. And yeah, we've, we've been doing that for a couple of years now. So we know pretty Bowling Green pretty well, but there's always a chance to see more for sure. The school year has definitely been the one that I formed the strongest ties to Bowling Green, and it's going to be really, really hard to leave. Um, I don't really know many activists in Louisville to organize with, so yeah, I'm going to be leaving behind all my work, um, and all my friends. Try and help from afar, of course, but it's not really going to be the same, unfortunately. But at least I will be able to stay in touch with everyone and up to date. I really spent pretty much this entire week catching up on this project I had for my UX class where I had to make a website prototype for a um, something that I was interested in, something unique, and I chose zines because um, I really love zine making. Um, as far as YDSA, we have moved to a video streaming um, kind of aspect of Discord because we wanted, we decided we wanted to see each other's faces. It helps uh, make it feel more personal and... Yeah, it's just nice to see people, you know, it's, it's really, it's a lot different from just talking on the phone. Um, so that, yeah, that was nice. My friends and I have also been kind of experimenting with more creative ways to kind of hang out digitally. Um, because, I don't know, a lot of us aren't prone to phone calling. I think me and, and most people in my generation just don't really, I don't know, we're not really comfortable with it. Um, it's easier to text. And phone calls can just feel awkward. I don't know. I don't always really know what to say. And it's like there's this void of silence that needs to be filled. Um, so it always just feels kind of strange to me. I've always been scared of phone calls. I remember it was a big thing when I was a kid. My mom would always force me to call people on the phone because I was so scared of it. But um, So anyway, we, we've been playing online games together. My friend at NKU and I played a, a like reboot of the old Club Penguin game together. And yeah, I mean, it was fun. It's a good way. It's a nice, like, fun way to shake things up and you know, like things you can do together digitally, but far away. And it's also just a nice mental break. So Wednesday afternoon, I went to the greenhouse to help Jessica and Ryan pot some new um, seeds that we had. I think we planted some bell peppers, um, some sunflowers, and a couple other types of edible things, I believe. Um, but it was nice. It's really, it's always really soothing and relaxing working in that environment, especially when it's raining out. And it, it actually hailed, which was <laughs> kind of scary. Um, the weather has just been all over the place and it's, yeah, it's really unsettling, but um, I love the greenhouse. I love to go in there and just hang out and, and it's just so soothing being surrounded by plants and hearing the fans going is a nice pleasant white noise. Um, but I think, yeah, and it's just a really nice soothing environment. I, I've been part of Horticulture Club since, uh, since freshman year. I've been doing the posters and uh, other designs for them because I'm the publications or physical media chair. But, um, so yeah, I, I love the greenhouse. It's been a constant in my life this entire time and I've never you know I never had much gardening experience or knew anything about plants beforehand um and can't say I know too much now um but I, I might have a fair understanding of succulents and at least a couple different um names of different types a 
a friend of a friend made me a mask, so I've had something more safe to wear to the store, and uh, I've been really thankful. Jessica and I have been doing some Zoom study dates, and I'm usually not good at studying with people, but at this point I'll take human companionship in any form I can, honestly. In the vein of playing uh, childhood video games, it's kind of stress relief and just a kind of easy way to let my mind rest from all the stuff I'm doing. Um, this I used to play this like Pirates of the Caribbean game all the time in like 2012 with my friend, and it was just awesome. Like I remember it being the funnest game ever, and I was so sad when they shut it down, but I looked it up and apparently they did a reboot that I didn't even know about, so yeah, I instantly done that. It's free, um, and everything in the game is free now, so it's like super awesome and exciting. Um, and I, I totally just jumped right back in, I mean, it's, yeah, it's just as fun as I remember, honestly. I, and I, I'm not much of like, well, I guess I am a gamer, I don't know. I don't, I've never had any like video game consoles, I've always had to play computer games. And I don't obviously spend that much time on it, but it definitely is a nice, uh, kind of just relaxing thing to do. On our walks, I've been able to collect some flowers and greenery that, once pressed and dried, I'll be able to put in resin. Um, I started doing resin art in January when nothing was in bloom, so I haven't had a chance to use any natural um, flora yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm excited just to do creative things in general because I haven't had a chance to work on anything creative this entire semester, unfortunately. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to having some free time again to do that because that's, yeah, that really fulfills me. I never had any pets growing up except, I think, maybe a fish, so living with this little cat, um, Bobby Socks, has been really cute, and it's not like I have to take care of him personally or anything because he doesn't belong to me, but um, it's just nice having him around and keep him, having him keep me company <laughs> when I'm staying up late working on stuff. And some of our friends got together at um, Hospital Hill for a socially distanced sort of gathering. <laughs> um, didn't stay too long, but... It's just nice to see people. Jack moved back to Louisville today. I'll be following suit tomorrow, but yeah, his room looks so empty without all his stuff there. He left his furniture, but all the rest is mine. Okay, good. <laughs> whoa, whoa, oh! <laughs> that was wait, wait, good though. Again, oh, here you go. Tetanus shot, thank you. Here we go.
moving really wasn't bad at all because I had so much help. Um, and I think being home now, I'm definitely going to be doing a lot of FaceTime and Zoom calls with people to stay connected since I won't be able to physically go out and see anybody. Probably for the best, too. Um, but, yeah, Jack and I did a Zoom call where we just kind of, or a FaceTime where we just kind of worked on stuff together. And it's nice. It's not the same as being together, but it's definitely nice to have that option. all my stuff. Well, actually not all of it because some of it's in my room. In senior year of high school, I went through a really big minimalism initiative where I just threw out so much stuff that I owned. And it was really liberating because you know, I've always wanted to travel and not really be based out of anywhere specific. So obviously having like fewer items is conducive to that, whereas having a lot, I mean, it's like a tether, you're really burdened by it. But um, just in college, I've just developed so many different hobbies and interests that I need supplies for and different things for. So it's hard. It's really hard to balance. But and I just know moving between campus and home all the time really puts a damper on how much you want to own because it is such it's such a hassle to move. I'm not being quarantined by my family, per se, but I do have to wear a mask when I'm around them or anywhere outside of my room. One of the bathrooms in the house is also um, sanctioned for just my use, so I don't spread any sort of germs when I'm brushing my teeth or anything. And I think we are basing it off of the two-week uh, no-symptom incubation period. Also on Friday night before Jack left on Saturday, he bleached my hair. Which neither of us has ever bleached hair before, so I think he did a pretty good job considering. Um, I'm going to have my mom go back over it just to get it a little blonder and to get some of the spots that he missed. Pretty much everybody here is wearing a mask right now. I'm glad to see it because in Bowling Green there were so many people who just weren't wearing masks and I don't blame them, I mean they're hard to find, but it's dangerous. Also last week someone from the Herald contacted Ryan and I. Um, Ryan has been working on the petitions and the list of demands campaign with me and they wanted to ask us just kind of like what our motivations were in starting the petition, like what our goals were, um, kind of like what the process was and why we think it's so important. And so um, the article was published and it had, the petition had 300, the cash refund petition had 300 signatures at the time, and um, once the article was published and emailed out, it skyrocketed up to like 700 or 800 that night, and then um, it's been kind of just slowly building ever since then, but um, now we're at almost 1,000 signatures, and once we've hit 1,000, I think our plan is to print the list of demands, print all the petitions, print everyone who signed, um, and like physically mail copies off to Kaboni, like all the administration, everyone relevant. And also, I think we're going to have an email template made so that we can have students easily send um, a template to like all um, relevant constituents, or all relevant representatives, I guess, um, and the administration to kind of like voice their opinions on why they personally want this. People have been commenting, tons of people have been commenting their needs, so it's, it's clear that this is an urgent and evident need for lots of students and parents. It's been sad to see the dire conditions and situations evidenced through the comments, but it's also encouraging to see that people actually do need what we're trying to provide. Um, you know, you want to be sure that you're actually representing the community you're trying to represent and doing things that they actually need, not something that you're just assuming that they need. Um, but I, th I think that this is a pretty universal need, you know. You pay for something and you're not getting it, so yes, you should get your money back instantly because... I mean, students, so many students are having to buy food and buy housing from other sources and they don't have the money back from school. Now they have just had to pay for it twice in the same period and it's just not sustainable. I mean, those students need that money so much more immediately and more tangibly than the school does. It's just, it's just true. And so I really, I'm not being able to focus on the campaign as much heading into finals week, unfortunately, but I'm really, really, really hoping that we can just get something, some, some, some movement done on it soon. Once we hit a thousand um, and we can start the pressure the campaign with like real backing from 
from the community, then I just have to hope that something something will happen. And, and it's encouraging because a thousand is more than three point five percent of WVU student population, and there's a rule that when more than three point five percent has a sustained, prolonged support of something, it inevitably inevitably will uh, will pass. So. I'm very hopeful we can secure justice.